Hi, welcome to the Business Class ESL Break Room. We're a company of passionate language trainers and coaches. We're here to share ideas, to improve our skills, and strengthen the training community. Come in for some inspiration, leave with tips to apply to your sessions today. Hi, and welcome to the ESL Break Room. If you're back for more inspiration and motivation as an ESL trainer, I've got the guest for you. Today, we are welcoming Nina Hanakova, who is a Nina English from the Czech Republic. She's also the founder of the successful women in ELT group. And I brought her on today because she just has such a bright demeanor and disposition and a megawatt smile. And I thought, she would have a lot to share in terms of um, what she brings to the table in language training, because um, as I've witnessed her and, and experienced her material out there in social media, I think she definitely embodies the dogme approach, and she might want to talk to us about that. So Nina, welcome. Hello, and um, thank you very much for your invitation and the introduction. I am blushing here. <laughs> no, don't be so seriously. Since we've met, you know, you definitely exude a lot of enthusiasm for what we do. And that's what we're looking for here at ESL Breakroom. So, you know, sometimes we all need a little boost. So <laughs> tell us, you know, what is it that you do and, and how do you do it? <laughs> Well, I'm very happy to bring some uh, positive energy here. I um, have been um, teaching and freelancing as an ELT professional for 19 years and loving it every single day, more and more. That's um, what we're after. <laughs> <laughs> How do you keep it up? <laughs> because it's work with people. Mm -hmm. And I loved working, communicating with people and helping others as they help me uh, become a better person and have a nicer life. And um, if it's through something that I love, which is languages, uh, specifically English at the moment, but I learned other languages in the past as well as a non-native speaker. I help uh, people from mostly my country, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, of course, very similar languages, but also people from abroad. Um, mm -hmm. I don't teach through Czech, so it doesn't matter where they are from. And yeah, we enrich each other and uh, it's a beautiful life. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you see, you see everybody, this is why. <laughs> so I mentioned the dogma approach and yeah. Some people are quite academic and others may not be aware. What does that actually mean? Can you just enlighten everyone and then let us know how does that work for you or what does it look like? Well, dogme approach is um, material light approach. Yeah, materials light approach. Um, Scott Thornbury, Luke Meddings, uh, those guys are my heroes. Um, I... I was so happy when I discovered them quite early on. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it, I was at the stage when I wanted to get rid of course books because I felt like my students weren't really progressing. Mm -hmm. I was being bored and I actually wanted to change professions. And then I discovered um, Doug May uh, teaching Unplugged and I just uh, couldn't be happier because um, it basically... Um, copied my way of learning languages outside of school like mm -hmm. I felt like every at that time now I see that not everything that teachers do in schools with course books not everything is wrong but for me most of it was wrong at that time and I wanted to change and switch the mindsets of students completely after changing mine remembering how I actually learned languages through interaction, through different um, resources, uh, lots of input and just human interaction and uh, deep uh, conversations and, and so on and so on. So I started um, learning more about it and I realized uh, that all this emergent language um, idea and um, working with what uh, the student comes with 
-hmm. into your lesson is honestly the best approach. I have the best results with that. And it also helps my life because I don't have to prepare so much, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I can just go with the flow. And although I do love to plan lessons, the best lessons are the ones that just emerge from the conversation, whether it's with one person or in a group. I love teaching groups. We can talk about teaching groups because I use Dogma ELT in groups a lot and it's magical. Really? Okay. So yeah. could you give us maybe a little scenario or maybe something mm -hmm. you remember that worked in particularly well um, at the time? Ab absolutely. Well, um, my experiential courses I based on um, Dogma mm -hmm. um, and other approaches, communicative approach, connected learning approach. And I created courses where um, there are no materials, really, only people's notes. And the input is what we bring in as teachers, because I cooperate on my group courses with other teachers, mostly international, uh, international friends of mine, uh, international colleagues of mine who come in and they bring a topic with them, but they're not bringing it on paper or in some book. They're bringing it through themselves and their skills. So um, a lot of um, a lot of experiential lessons where we cook, we um, take city tours, uh, or we dive into topics that everybody is interested in. We watch movies. Um, yeah, so many so many different things. There are endless possibilities, and then we work with the language as it appears, as it emerges, and of course. Um, we can uh, use the flipped classroom uh, approach as well, where um, we first look at some vocab or play some games with vocabulary and then do the activities and then revise the vocab. This works very well with cooking lessons, for example, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, where we play some pantomime or use drawings and so on to revise mostly mm -hmm. the language that we already know and maybe in groups help uh, each other with learning new words cooking verbs kitchen equipment things like that and we actually do go go into the kitchen next time and and we cook and and prepare some yummy stuff so there's there are the senses um, many different senses yeah uh, included and as we go Mm -hmm. We write down the language, we remember, we uh, revise from the lesson before. And um, when it's through an experience, when we learn through doing something, it's when um, it really uh, remains in our brains. Mm -hmm. And um, that's all uh, students want, right? So that they can do it in a fun way. Um, they can make new friends while doing it because they really keep in touch in the group with the international teachers, with the guests, and it becomes a beautiful community. So there's so much more than just learning English coming out of that. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. So I'm really thankful to Doug May ELT that, you know, uh, when I was kind of lost and I didn't know what to do next and I wanted to change careers, it saved me. Ah, you got to that point. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I love the idea of a cooking class. That sounds amazing. And yet a lot of who I work with and a lot of my colleagues here in France, we work with people, you know, business people. Do you have any advice? What would you say to a trainer like us, such like me, who, who's going into companies, who's working with people? How can you bring that, but on a smaller scale, if we can't take them out to, you know, walk around the city or take them out um, to a cooking class, what would you do? Uh, well, I would use the language coaching approach, of course, uh -huh. uh, because I completely forgot to mention that. That's the most important <laughs> thing. It's so closely connected. Yeah. Uh, back uh, when I started using Dogma ELT, I think I naturally uh, started using the language coaching principles without knowing that it's called language coaching. There was no mm -hmm. buzz about it uh, before, but now we know so much more about this approach and how we can actually help people learn through the things that they are genuinely interested in. 
because yeah. then they will be much more motivated to learn, to keep learning, uh, to open um, a book or watch something um, in English or speak with someone when it's really connected to their soul, as I say, yeah. and their passion. So every single time I start working with a client, whether it's um, an, an indiv individual uh, course or mm -hmm. in a group, even in companies, mm -hmm. I always talk to them a lot about not just their needs. Yeah, the needs analysis, we all know we should do that at the beginning, but what are their passions? What makes them tick? in their own language. So I actually have a questionnaire. It's a very simple one that everyone needs to fill out before we even start working. And then I gather all this information about everyone and we just discuss it in the first lesson. And they, if it's in a group setting, they just share. And in business settings, in office settings, it gets really exciting because people learn so much more about them, uh, about each other, about their colleagues, you know, and they start laughing and it can become this friendly atmosphere, friendly time when they don't drag the fact that oh now there's another English lesson you know mm -hmm. if, especially if you work with uh, uh, with um, people who are not so keen on learning the language and they just need it for negotiating or writing emails and they're bloody bored with that yeah yeah <laughs> uh, but they, it, it, that is the reality and then yes. their boss pushes them to this English course uh, make it fun for them make it like um, you know we are sitting here all having a nice cup of coffee um, I try to make it as comfortable for them as possible and in such an environment people learn much faster when I work with my let me just add to that that when mm -hmm. I work with my colleagues uh, because I have a small language school so I work with uh, colleagues who are teaching other groups yeah and they always ask me well Nina what, like what do you want from me what 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 do you want me to to do uh, first of all be yourself of course mm -hmm. and like you told me before uh, this interview just be yourself <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I am and then the second thing I I say as long as the people laugh, and uh, the I can hear the uh, the laugh and the chatter from the classroom coming into my office, yeah. As long as you manage to do that, they're gonna be learning. Ah, oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, you just bring such a buoyancy to the whole topic, which I I really appreciate. Um, what are you excited about right now? I mean, the start of the new year. Have you? found yourself, I don't know, interested in any particular new aspect of things or something to try with your groups or your people? Well, um, recently in the past three or four years, yeah, three mm -hmm. or four years now, I've been uh, more focused on helping other teachers, my colleagues and people from um, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and now also internationally uh, with help of social media, especially LinkedIn, where we both met. Yes. Uh, help my colleagues um, with their careers. So mm -hmm. both business-wise and methodology-wise. So for those who are interested in, in uh, this language coaching, Dogma, ELT, experiential learning. So just sharing my experience. Mm -hmm. helping them get where I got through hacks, tricks, and shortcuts. I love helping people uh, with uh, shortcuts. And uh, they're always amazed how simple it actually sounds. It's like, yes, it's common sense. And That's not always <laughs> common practice. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've just been so excited about helping other ELT freelancers um, become more confident, become more successful. So recently I've been running a club for female ELT entrepreneurs and um, I have started a podcast. I also do interviews. It's called Successful Women in ELT, where I interview not just women, but men as well. And not just from ELT, but uh, business mentors yeah, who can help us with copywriting or what is it like to have kids and uh we call it mompreneuring this is my mm -hmm. newest podcast 
that I just mm -hmm. published today. Um, what is it like um, to um, have to be teaching two languages, um, inspiring interviews with other uh, successful English teachers, freelancers? Yeah, it's all for mm -hmm. freelancers, mm -hmm. uh, both men and women. So this really excites me and this is my thing these days, apart from teaching, because I never want to stop teaching. If I'm supposed to be, you know, uh, what should I say, um, sharing uh, the wisdom <laughs> <laughs> from my, from my uh, field, I yeah. should still be in touch uh, with teaching. I believe it's really, really important and progress in teaching myself. Yeah. I am super, when you're asking about, if you ask me about teaching, um, there's one thing I'm really excited about now, and that's um, audio messages, audio recordings, uh, e everything audio, because we are all so tired from the screens. Yes. And um, there is such, um, uh, I would say, um, such a big need uh, mm -hmm. for uh, getting out after the pandemic, getting outside, taking walks, and uh, a lot of people are starting to listen to podcasts wow. or, mm -hmm. or uh, sending each other messages, mm -hmm. audio messages. I actually love to teach without the, the camera on because I believe we focus on the language and each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. communication much more when we are not distracted by looking at ourselves and each mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. of course if I need to show something how to pronounce something I can put the camera on but most of the time it's not necessary so learning through audio both um, exchanging messages between students teacher student student teacher and also listening as input yeah. I think I think uh, this is a big thing these days and uh, we could use m more of um, that in our in our teaching, in our courses. Indeed, and it's fabulous how it's become much more accessible because yeah. we, we all, before we had just sort of the recorded audios from the, the books that weren't always very natural. And now- Looking can... for my AirPods here. <laughs> I'm in love with my AirPods. This is the best investment. Everybody get AirPods or something like that because it will set you free. I started listening to so much more these days. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah. it's great. It's like having, having your best friends around all the time. Yeah. <laughs> they're in your ears. Indeed, indeed. So we are hoping to do that now with this podcast, with this interview, yeah? So hello, exactly. everyone. <laughs> this is what we do. And when I send a message to our group of trainers, sometimes I say, here's something for your weekend walk and your jog, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And so do you, I love when you said you had hacks. Do you have maybe, what's your favorite hack, top hack or time saver or, uh, I don't know, what's one, that, what's one that makes people go, <gasps> Wow, why didn't I think of that? Okay, so I'll connect it to, I'm thinking now, but I'll probably connect it to what I've just said mm -hmm. about recording um, messages or recording something for the student. So my most recent hack, and it's again, common sense, is that after I, I um, actually shortened my lessons now from one hour to around 45 minutes because that, that was the demand and I usually teach busy professionals. Mm -hmm. So uh, they don't wanna do the full hour. So I uh, shortened the time of our lessons. I didn't make it uh, um, cheaper, but I do more work for them by recording mm -hmm. stuff for them and mm -hmm. sending it to them via WhatsApp or Messenger or SMS or email, whatever they pick. And I record the uh, content of our lesson, mostly the mm -hmm. phrases, some grammar, some new expressions. I record it and send it to them together with the list of expressions and, and grammar issues. And they have been progressing so much faster just because of this, because they can listen to it as many times as they want. It's not just a piece of text. It's also in their ears. They can connect it with what, it's writ what is written very easily in a message that they normally go to to communicate with friends yeah, or message mm -hmm. platform like WhatsApp, for example, or Viber, or you pick. 
And um, they tell me that they listen to it usually several times um, a week before the next lesson. And uh, they really use it. They remember the vocab. So this is so much more um, effective than all the vocab apps and uh, you know posting it in a Google document and then sharing it with them. Um, I, I just get as close to them as possible this way. I repeat the list of uh, words and expressions twice and I give, there's this break, there's this po uh, pause that they can use for repeating it themselves. Mm -hmm. They hear it with their English teacher's voice. So yeah. they feel like it's um, very, you know, personalized. It is because sometimes I make comments mm -hmm. about this or that grammar that maybe I didn't mention in the lesson because they're you know, there was no uh, space for that. They love it. They tell me, oh, I especially love when you make like personal comments to me. Um, to be That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I share this yeah. with, with my colleagues, when I consult with uh, other teachers, how they can um, make their lessons, make their courses more effective, they always go like, oh, wow, this is so simple. And I never thought of it. Yeah. So this is this is probably one of my favorite hacks that uh, other teachers go like, "Wow, this is so cool." That's fab. I'm going to give you a high five right here. <laughs> I love that. I love that because yes, they will listen more than they ever find time to go back to the document. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you on behalf of everyone. Very welcome. I could be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to have you back. <laughs> So what's coming up for you? Is there anything you want to share um, with the audience? Uh, events I saw on LinkedIn, you're planning. Oh, you're so events. kind. Yay. Thank you for giving me this space. <laughs> okay, of course. So I will invite you all um, to uh, my conference, which I call a festival. It is in Brno, Czech Republic. So if you're nearby, um, you can even uh, hop on a plane and come from France, Spain, <laughs> the UK, wherever you want. Um, because, for example, I am going to France this uh, this uh, spring, this summer, for a conference. Yeah, from the Czech Republic. Hopefully, soon we we will be able to meet yes. in the Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I think after the pandemic, we should really do this. Keep meeting offline and giving each other a physical hug and be with each other go for a glass of wine together and celebrate celebrate our profession our um our hard work yeah. um our our passion for languages and helping others so that's why i call my conference a festival mm -hmm. uh, language teachers festival this is uh, the third uh, time I am organizing it and it's growing it's uh, bigger and bigger every time I uh, I organize it and it's going to be in May the 20th and 21st of May here in Brno full weekend of workshops masterminding um, and um, a lot of networking we're going to a cocktail bar in the evening we'll have a city tour and uh, yeah we'll just have a lot of fun what we teachers love most about conferences i just take everything and i bring it to the language teachers festival so you are all very welcome um just uh message me and i'll send you a link sounds absolutely fantastic i've already checked my calendar but anyway thank you so much nina hanakova and how can they reach you best what's the best way what's your website what is your my website uh, is unfortunately mostly in Czech at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but you can always use Google Translate, uh, of course, so <laughs> ninaenglish.cz. Uh, but I, um, I, I think the best way uh, to contact me is on LinkedIn. I love uh, connecting with people on LinkedIn. Please send me a LinkedIn request and I'll be happy to chat with you. I love, uh, um, yeah making new friends like with you Sue uh, <laughs> via LinkedIn and uh, we can share so much more more tips um, I just love reading the news feed where everyone is sharing what they're doing in their work in their businesses and it is just so helpful and I love our 
ELT community. So LinkedIn is probably the best way because, you know, a website is static. Yes, okay, you can go and have a look what I do. Go on my Instagram, Nina English. You can, you know, go all these places, but where the action happens is LinkedIn. Yes. Well, yeah. this has been just a blast. You've already boosted my energy tenfold. So thank you so much for sharing all of your great ideas. And we'll definitely look forward to hearing more about May. So okay. wishing best of luck and hope you come back soon. <laughs> thank you very much. I can't believe this was it. It felt like five minutes. So I'll be very happy to share more whenever you uh, want to invite me again. I'll be happy to share tricks and hacks and how much I love ELT. Thanks for joining us in the Business Class ESL Break Room, the podcast designed to bring business English trainers useful ideas, inspiration, and conversation that motivates. Follow us on Instagram at business underscore class underscore language and subscribe to the ESL Break Room playlist on Spotify, Deezer, or Apple Music for new episodes. See you next time. Thank you.